What's up, titos and titas? Jared and Coende here, Tito Fit. So we got some big news coming from the CrossFit community. Remember that a few weeks ago, we came up with a video in response to what was happening in the CrossFit community with Greg Glassman stepping down as CEO amidst the controversial a tweet and then eventually that spiraled down into something a lot bigger than that and um, it was forced to step down as the CEO of CrossFit. So what's happened since then? Let's do a quick recap of the last two weeks or so. So about two weeks ago, uh, Greg Glassman's former personal pilot and a former Navy SEAL who used to work for CrossFit and was actually in charge of maintaining the relationship between CrossFit and some of the sponsors of the CrossFit Games, a man named Andy Stumpf. He uh, came out with his podcast, Uh, his podcast is called Cleared Hot, and he discussed the culture inside of CrossFit HQ, uh, where he worked from 2010 until 2014. Now, in that podcast, he came out with the culture of misogynistic uh, culture within HQ and how uh, Greg Glassman's password for the Wi-Fi network inside of CrossFit HQ and even in his home uh, was actually something that sounded like a wet cat but not really meaning a wet cat if you know what I mean (laughs) all right so and they were actually uh, that staff inside of HQ were actually sexualizing uh, some of the CrossFit Games athletes the female CrossFit Games athletes how they would uh, compare the athletes by how much the men inside HQ would by degree of which one they would want to sleep with first so it was really a sad culture inside of CrossFit HQ that uh, the average CrossFitter or the normal affiliate owner and uh, member of a CrossFit box was not privy to but Andy Stumpf came out with this in response to this uh, podcast even more affiliates actually defiliated and then we also had some high-profile CrossFit Games athletes even really, really uh, share the link to the podcast. So after those two weeks was a really, really big descent for Greg Glassman, I would say. So an article was published in the New York Times. Can't get, can't, can't get any more exposed than that. And in this article, that culture was actually discussed as well. And even some of the dealings with his ex-wife and how some of the someone at CrossFit HQ was accusing uh, Andy Stumpf and Greg Glassman's ex-wife as uh, coming out with this uh, podcast and these allegations in order to leverage the company into selling CrossFit HQ to them. So, so there were some of these allegations. Now, a few days after that, uh, there was surprise news. Uh, Dave Castro announced on his Instagram and I think his Twitter that they were selling CrossFit to a man named Eric Rosa. So the new owner of CrossFit is now going to be Eric Rosa. He is also going to be the CEO. Now, who is Eric Rosa? If you ask me, this is a step in the right direction for CrossFit HQ. Now, a lot of these games athletes, a lot of these affiliates actually distanced themselves from CrossFit in light of the racist comments, the allegations, misogynistic culture that was being fostered in CrossFit HQ. And some of them, even when Greg Glassman had already stepped down and passed the baton to Dave Castro, they said that they would not be competing in the CrossFit Games. Katrin David's daughter, uh, Noah Olsen. But as soon as Eric Rosa was announced as the guy who would be the new CEO and owner of CrossFit, uh, I think there is a lot of positive feedback from that. Now, why is this? Uh, Let's look at the guy a bit. So the guy, Eric Rosa, he used to run a company uh, in Colorado called Data Logics. Now, Data Logics was sold to Oracle. So yes, that Oracle. And uh, for, I think, a little over $1 billion at a valuation of over $1 billion. You have tech unicorn status there. And Eric Rosa became senior vice president of Oracle's Data Cloud after afterwards so the guy is is used to working with big companies with a very very formal corporate structure this guy is probably more familiar with how to run an office with proper inclusivity proper office decorum 
and even fostering proper culture. The company that he used to own, Data Logics, the one that was acquired by Oracle, was named Outside Magazine's top 50 best places to work in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, right before he sold it to Oracle. So he came out on a Zoom call with Dave Castro and the whole point of the Zoom call was for Dave Castro to introduce Eric Rosa to the community. Now, the good thing about Eric Rosa, aside from his solid corporate background, is that the guy is one of us. He's a CrossFitter. The guy has a 2 minute and 40 fran time considering that he's over 50 years old and I think he got that fran time when he turned 50 or something like that if I'm not mistaken. Guy has a max uh, of 64 pull-ups unbroken so on his stats you could do some digging about that so some of them put that and uh, you know he seems like a good guy in general. I watched the Zoom call with between him and Dave Castro as he was being introduced to the community. He looks very open. He seems like he's very willing to uh, take on the company and steer it towards um, you know positive change. And he seems like he wants to cater to the concerns of the affiliate owners that he feels may have been neglected in the past. Now. This is because Eric is an affiliate owner. So I failed to mention that he owned a box called CrossFit Sanitas in Boulder, Colorado, one of the most active uh, cities in the US. His box has about 400 members. And for those of you who are not in, uh, who are not familiar with the numbers of CrossFit, that's a good number. You maintaining 400 members and having a solid community, it sounded like he had a very solid community on his, uh, on his YouTube uh, Zoom call with Dave Castro. So it seems like he's a good change. So I'm very hopeful for the future of CrossFit personally. Now, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Eric Rosa is actually going to uh, be the one that CrossFit needed, be the savior that CrossFit needed in the midst of all these allegations against Greg Glassman and uh, how uh, 1,300 affiliates basically de-affiliated from CrossFit or were planning on de-affiliating? So what do you think? Do you think that uh, how, how many of those 1,300 affiliates are going to be coming back? And as far as the athletes are concerned, uh, high-profile athletes like uh, Catch and David's daughter, Noah Olsen, Chandler Smith, Cole Sager, do you think that they are now going to be competing in the CrossFit Games again? Speaking of, Dave Castro just announced as well that um, the CrossFit Games for 2020 would be further postponed to a later date. The earliest he said that it might happen is September. Still in Aromas, California and also known as the Ranch. And the reason why is because, you know, of course, there's a lot of travel restrictions. A lot of the athletes, especially those who are not uh, coming from the U.S., the ones who are from around the world. I mean, after all, the competition is supposed to determine the fittest on Earth. Now, you can't determine who the fittest on Earth is if you're only serving to have competitors from one or two countries, the U.S. and Canada. But uh, since the other, most of the other countries are still not allowed to enter the U.S. as of now, it's going to be a little bit difficult to have a proper field of competitors from a lot of the countries that should be represented in the CrossFit Games. So a lot of good things happening, a lot of positive changes happening. And in the midst of everything that's going on in the world right now, these are the changes that we need. A lot of people are speaking up. A lot of people are standing for what they believe in. Sometimes we may think that these moral obligations or these moral stands mean nothing. It's easy for us to think that, but a couple of people eventually large, uh, leads to more people. And these people, if they demand change, the change happens. You just have to be patient. <laughs> All right, tell me what you think, guys. Do you think Eric Rosa is the savior that CrossFit needs? Do you think that he will cater to the affiliates' needs? Now, if you guys don't know, Tito Fit is a channel we cater to CrossFitters, people who are into building functional fitness. Also, those who are trying to improve their aesthetics. We try to cover a wide range of topics in the fitness industry based in the Philippines so a lot of the, our videos will be catered towards Filipinos so we will be speaking in Filipino in our other videos but CrossFit being such a global phenomenon uh, we decided to speak in English in this video or in our other CrossFit videos.
So I'm Jardan Conde. If you made it this far, please subscribe to this channel, guys. It really does us a favor. And then give this video a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm helps us out by recommending it to more people who this might be relevant to. Alright guys, thank you.